Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand and we'll say a prayer together. As the earth continues to move in, in this cycle into longer nights and shorter days, and we celebrate in our gatherings the same kind of process of the spiritual journey of emptying out, finding quiet, finding center. I invite you to just draw your hearts to the place in your own life where you find yourself ready to shed something, ready to empty out. Let's pray. Holy One, our world is so full of activity that we find ourselves in constant motion, it seems like. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it's even our dance. We're like dancing to someone else's tune all the time. Perhaps in these moments we might be called to that more authentic journey of finding how our own bodies move, to finding how from the inside out we create the dance and that you create it through us. So open our hearts and minds as we celebrate this gift of learning to dance. Amen. Grant us 
Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships go leave Then I watch them all away again I just sit on the dock of the bay And watching the tide roll away Dark of the day, wasting time. Left our home in Georgia. Yes, I was here for the Frisco Bay. I, I, I had nothing to live for. In the town, all the way. Would I be sitting on the dark of the bed, wasting time? Looks like nothing's gonna change. Everything is still be the same. Tell me to do so. So I guess I'm made the same man. Sitting here, resting my bones. And this loneliness will leave me alone. I two thousand miles I roam. Just to make this dark my home. I, I'm gonna sit on the top of the bed. Watching the tide roll away. Now I'm sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from uh, two books, the Old Testament, Isaiah, and from the New Testament in the book of Luke. If you'll listen as I read to you, the first comes from Isaiah 65, 17 through 19. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered nor come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. Now from the book of Luke, chapter 21, 5 through 15. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that, is, that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he. The time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all of this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. I'm going to show a movie clip here in just a second from a movie that's called The, the Way, Way Back. Anybody in here seen that movie yet, The Way, Way Back? Um, it's a wonderful movie, and it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a bit of a troubling movie at first because it involves, and you won't see his character in here, but, but Steve Carell, who, uh, who we're always normally used to seeing in a humorous, and he play, in a humorous role, and he plays probably the just worst kind of personality that you'd ever want around you in, uh, in this particular movie, but it really brings home the point of this movie. When the central character is who we're going to see, a uh, young kid, a 14-year-old by the name of Duncan, and as the scene opens up, as the show, op as the movie opens up, Duncan is riding in a car with his mother's boyfriend, who's overbearing and um, um, impatient with Duncan. And uh, Duncan is very depressed about the whole reality around him, a father who's not really wanting to pay any attention to him. And so he's forced upon his mother and his mother's boyfriend, who also doesn't really want him around, and his boyfriend and her boyfriend's daughter, who doesn't want him around either. And so he's in the way, way back of a station wagon as he's um, looking out backwards and riding into a beach town, the, a small beach uh, house in uh, South Carolina, it looks like. And, and so as this scene starts to unfold, Duncan has pretty much tried to get away from the place as much as he can, get out of the house as much as he can. He hardly says a word to anyone, sullen-faced, he's depressed the whole time. And his life is miserable. Um, he probably would end it if it seemed like there was a quick option. But he stumbles on a water park. And the gates open for the, for the employees to enter into. And so he just wanders into it and runs into the lead character, the, the secondary character, who's the uh, manager of this water park and who you'll see in this scene, who sees something in Duncan that no one else seems to have seen. And it's this sort of trial by fire that Duncan is introduced to come out of himself in an interesting way that is the turning point in the movie. And that's the scene we're going to see. And I'll just tell you one thing about this scene. Uh, I rented the movie and then discovered afterwards as we tried to plug it in that it's copyrighted. You can't show it on the... We're looking at it as if you bought this in Central America. <laughs> we are filming the video. So you, you'll see Austin holding it and over the camera <laughs> over it. So just imagine you've bought a $2 bootleg copy.
Let's sing together. Come, Spirit, come and fill our soul. our voices. Come Spirit, come and fill our souls. We hunger now to be made whole. We bring our dreams, our joys and So I invite you to just close your eyes for a few moments, maybe, and let this just, just be some time to step out of what has become so automatic. This morning, I'm just so aware of the way everything becomes so patterned for us and how easy it is to just go through a day without really looking at anything besides what you think you've already seen before and not even notice how everything is always changing everyone around us, everything around us. So we hold these images in our heads of the people and the places that we go. And we start relating to them as those images. So we move through every moment of our lives in some kind of repetitive dance. So easy just to fall asleep to it all. Holy One, if we could just wake up and see creation unfolding all the time in us and in everything around us. Maybe it would awaken the gratitude from our hearts again. It might awaken the sense of life inside of us again.
Help us find this mystical dance that we find is so elusive sometimes in the numbing repetition of our little images that don't even begin to capture the majesty or the mystery of all that is. Amen. I've been sleeping I've been so still Afraid of crumbling Have I been killed Dismissing all The distant rumblings Take me where I am Supposed to be To comprehend The things that I can't see Like it was 1999. My dreams were wild. The promise of this new world would be mine. Now I am throwing off the carelessness of you to listen to an inconvenient truth. went to a workshop once uh, down in Houston at the Jung Center where they um, talked some about our kind of anthropocentric and culturally centric expressions of life. And there was a woman from New Orleans who was a Jungian analyst who talked about movement and she got everybody up and got them moving. And I did my dance. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and 
she said, you know, what you white people need <laughs> is pelvic liberation. <laughs> Another ooh. Sorry. The experience of us as human beings is one of living in a body. And the body has its natural rhythms to it. And then we adapt and adopt the rhythms of a culture that help define what we do with our bodies. And over the past few weeks, we've been focusing on Samuel Bois' understanding of the human being represented by this model of seven different components that make up human consciousness. And what I love about Bois' model is he suggests that these seven different components are all linked up inside of us and that they interact with each other and impact each other. And what that would say to the idea of movement is that if you have been trained in a culture to only move like this, then you've also been trained in a culture to only feel like this. If you get trained to and raised in a culture to let your body move like this, you're also trained and raised in a culture to emotionally feel like this. So I could quit now. I probably made my major point. <laughs> but never cut short the possibility of saying more about something as central to the human consciousness as the idea that you and I have patterns, rituals, scripts that involve not just the way we feel, but the way we move. And the way we move and the way we feel impact the rituals and scripts about how we think. It's all linked up. So in a spiritual perspective, if you want to talk about the kind of ideas that Jesus was inviting us to think about in terms of transformation and in the passage we read today he talks about this temple being thrown down and transformation coming in the isaiah passage there is god saying through the prophet i'm gonna create a new creation it's happening every day it's happening every day that creation is transforming we are that creation but we cling and we hold and we live out these little patterns. And it's just our automated way of experiencing life. Want to open yourself up to more of how the spirit of creation might move through you? Then consider the possibility that some of the stuck patterns that you have in your life are all linked up. Even the way you think about God, even the way you think about life, and the meaning of life is impacted by these little rituals that we have around how we move. What are the limits to your freedom of movement? I have a friend up in Baltimore who's learning how to walk again. Not that she doesn't walk just fine, but she began to recognize that the pattern of the way she walks had a ritual to it that also carried a certain emotional dynamic. For instance, have you ever noticed somebody walking like this? Or maybe you've noticed the John Wayne walk. Every kind of movement involves an emotional dynamic, an emotional script that is defining what we look at and how we experience and filter the moment. That's what Bois' model suggests. This is called the semantic filter. The way you're making meaning out of the world is filtered through these little patterns that you have around movement and thinking and feeling. Next week, we'll finish out this model, and we'll talk about the last one, which is the electrochemical. He talks about that being a part of the pattern nature of our experience and filters. I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. We may pass out some Kool-Aid. I don't know what we're going to do. But there'll be something electrochemical involved. But today, as we think about how movement is a part of this whole filtering system, I want you to consider asking yourself, 
how do you know how to move? Where did you learn how to move? Once I used to do a lot of work with this, uh, this is 20 years ago, I got involved in taking a look at some of these ideas. And I got involved in a thing that was developed by a woman named Gabrielle Roth, and she did a, a program. She had written a book, and there was a whole bunch of uh, people around the country who were doing workshops on what she called sweat your prayers. And it was all about movement and breaking up the rituals to movement. She broke down all human movement into five rhythms. She said, all these five rhythms have corresponding emotional states. I now work from a model that says there are basically kind of nine rhythms biologically to the way we experience emotion. But she had five, and she said it basically worked like this. The, you, could, you could analyze any movement by these five kinds of movements. There was flow, which you can imagine is kind of like this. It's very kind of Tai Chi-like. Some of you are very flowy. And then there's staccato. Some of you are very staccato. And you can imagine the difference in the emotional states of people whose rhythms, movement-wise, tend to be more staccato from those who are more flowy. And then she said there's lyrical. Now, lyrical <coughs> is kind of playful. And I am... I'm really reticent to expressing and showing lyrical because this is going to be videotaped and sent out. <laughs> and it will forever be archived of me dancing lyrically in front of you. But I'm going to do it anyway. It's fine. Yeah. This is lyrical, right? Okay. Imagine the emotional state of lyrical. What's the expression? Some of you are lyrical people. And then there is chaos. In Gabriel Roth's version, there was this chaos, you know. And that has an emotional component, an emotional pattern to it. And finally, the fifth was stillness. Stillness. Some of you are really good at that. <laughs> we kind of get trained to be good at that in this culture. No one wants a child to practice chaos. <laughs> and often in our culture, if we see children practicing lyrical, we say, okay, you want to calm that down. It's a little too playful. Get serious. We're much more about stillness. And if you're going to move, try to flow a little bit. And if you have to, be staccato. But don't be doing a lot of this. Once, I was doing this workshop down in Round Top for a bunch of United Methodist women. They had, for some reason, asked me, a guy, to come do a workshop for 150 women who were all meeting together for a weekend, and, and they had me there, and I presented some things. And then I got to this part of looking at kind of the ritual nature of our movement, and I said, let's go outside, and we'll just play with some of this. We'll have some fun with it. So we all went outside. We got 150 women out in this big open field beautiful lawn, this wonderful day, beautiful October day. It was like 60 degrees, 65 degrees, and just sunny sky, clear blue sky. And everybody, I said, okay, I got my drum here, and uh, so I'm just going to drum, and let's all do, I had explained the five movements. I said, let's all just practice doing some flow movement. And so all the women were like flowing around the space. I put them in two big lines and had them flow toward each other, and they were flowing toward each other. And then I said, okay, let's try staccato. Everybody do staccato. So everybody's doing staccato. About this time, I saw a, a golf cart coming from way over here. I said, now that we're going to do lyrical. And they're all doing lyrical. And the golf cart pulls up next to me, and he says, <clears throat> guy gets out, and he says, uh, wh wh I don't know what you're doing, but you can't do this. <laughs> and what do you, so what do you mean? We're just doing a workshop on, we're doing some, no, 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 you can't do this. It's like you're scaring the horses. You can't have this happen. It's not okay to do this here. I said, well, you know, I would love to talk to you about what we're doing because I have a feeling it won't be nearly as threatening as you think it is, but I'll honor your request. And so we had to stop everyone and we moved everybody inside. And it was fascinating 
the responses. I couldn't have staged this better because the responses of these 150 women were split between those who felt utter shame that they had been told they were doing something wrong with their bodies to a whole bunch of other women who were really mad that some guy was going to tell them what they could do with their bodies. <laughs> and so we had this great processing time about where did you learn what was okay for you to do in terms of movement and where did you get your rituals around movement? And by the time nightfall came, there were about 150 women dancing in the dark out in the fields. <laughs> Where did you get your messages? I did a little work with uh, the whole Gabrielle Roth thing for a while, and I discovered that for me, I had strong messages, strong messages, that it was not okay for me to dance like this. Lyrical movement as a guy looked too funny. It wasn't okay. And I had to stop that. I had to stop that. I had to change some of that for myself because the message to me was not only, you see, if you look at Bois' model, that it's not okay to do some of this. It was the message that it's not okay to feel some of this. It's all hooked up together. You want to find your way to the joy and to the loving, exciting, connecting sense of the mystery and wonder of life? Maybe consider what it would be like to try a new rhythm, dance to a different tune, let yourself feel more free. Push back the fear and the fear of shame that you might have to move your body in some way that someone told you it's just not okay. You better look tough. Consider the possibility that freeing up that which is most open to the movement of the spirit of creation in your life might have to do with freeing up something about the pattern to your movement. And just like the movie that Tom found, that way, way back movie, what we sometimes need are those people around us to encourage us and invite us into the dance. How do you encourage those people around you to be freer with how they feel and how they move? One way you can do that is to demonstrate for them how well you are open to your own experience of movement freeing up from judgment and that kind of thing. We're going to need some guitar here in just a second because we're going to move straight into something that will give you an opportunity to practice that. Because in here, sometimes we've decided that 1111 shouldn't be the sit and soak version <laughs> of worship or celebration. It should be more like the rinse cycle or the spin cycle. And so... We're going to uh, do a little circle dance that we've often done in here. It's a little shalom dance. But today, maybe more than you have in the past, if you've done this dance with us before, I want you to just notice your own rhythm of movement. And where is it your own freedom? Let's support each other in kind of pushing back a little against that resistance. So as an end to our time together, I invite you to stand with me. And we'll just take each other's hands. It's a really simple dance step, unless you're really good, and then you can make it really complicated. Anybody want to join? Yeah, we'll hold hands. I'll hold hands with you. So we hold hands up like this. Now, it's a little grapevine step to the left. Those of you who don't know grapevine, it's just north of here. No, you take a step, you take a little step with the left foot, and then follow behind it with the right foot. And then cross back over with the left foot. And then cross over the front with the right foot. Okay? Now, we're going to go this way, and then we're going to go that way. So, we'll start off to the right, which is a step behind with the left foot. Are you ready? Everybody ready? Don't do it yet. Okay. Okay. Sing it for us, Tom. Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom Shalom To the left, God's peace be with you. 
God's peace be with you. Shalom, shalom. Okay, hold it there for a second. Now, every time you do something new, you know, it's going to feel weird. So just relax, okay? Just relax. Now, take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. Now, there are a lot of concerns that we have that, uh, you know, different people have shared with us. So for this next round, I want you to consider all the people who have different kind of challenges in their world right now. For instance, Elizabeth Lawrence continues to ask us for her prayers for Papa, her dog, who is really struggling. So let's keep some prayers going for her and her dog. I also want to remember all of those who are in the hospital, all of those in our lives who we know are struggling with different things. Sing the song to them today. To the right. Here we go. Shalom, Abarim, Shalom, Abarim, Shalom, Shalom. To the left. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Shalom, Shalom. To the right. Shalom, Abarim, Shalom, Abarim, Shalom. All right, so we're going to do this a couple of more times. And those of you who are back there, keep going left, keep going right. Do it just like we just did it. If you mess up, it's okay. Those of us in the middle, we're just going to go around and around to the left till we get dizzy. Okay, so. Uh, Maybe we'll pick up the tip on this. Yeah, I think so. And uh, another quick announcement. We actually uh, are starting to promote on December 21st. We will have Peter Mayer here. Make sure you're making reservations for that because we do have limited space. Uh, it's going to be a great time. And if you haven't done your offering yet, which I think we forgot to do, <laughs> we haven't yet once haven't again, song, we so. once again forgot the offering. We're dancing around and as we're all we invite dancing. you to bring your offerings to the altar after we finish dancing. <laughs> and after, after we... Say the benediction, really. So, but bring your offerings. We'll, okay. We'll play music to your uh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> to the left, here we go. Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. Keep going. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Shalom, Shalom. A little faster time. Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom. God's peace be with you, God's peace be with you, Shalom, Shalom, to the right, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Shalom, God's peace be with you, God's peace be with you, Shalom, Shalom, one more time, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, God's peace be with you, God's peace be with you. So we'll just do it now, just take a, you can drop hands. And you thought you were going to have to work out this afternoon, see? So we'll sing it one more time. These are the movements that we use sometimes. Shalom. God's peace be with you, God's peace be with you, Shalom. And then we bow. We'll sing it one more time. Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. God's peace be with you, God's peace be with you. Shalom, Shalom. God speak.